when I was a child in Catholic school and uh, also at home for my mother, they, when something didn't go right, um, they would talk about this passage, taking up your cross, um, both at school, the sister would say, well, you should offer this up for the poor souls in her purgatory. And my mother also, well, just offer it up. Um, and there's wisdom to that, because there are many factors of life that are simply unavoidable, right? I mean, there's no way through it except through it. Right? If you've lost someone you love, if you've lost your job, if you've failed, there's no only way through it is through it. So there, there is there is a certain wisdom to that. Why, why kick against the goat? You've got to endure it and go through it. So that's that's wise. But it's not as deep as what Jesus really is talking about um, when he says you must take up your cross and follow me. It's not it's not simply those reverses in life that, that just about everybody has. Some people more than others, for whatever reason. Genetics, I don't know. Um, being born in a war-torn country like Syria or something, but you're just at the mercy of violence. So, you know, they said, so that there are those crosses, and some people indeed do get more than their share of of suffering. I, I don't know why, and you don't know why. You'll have to ask God when you get there. But what Jesus really is talking about, and why why he was he rebuked Peter was that Peter what Jesus knew where his teaching was leading. You didn't have to be an Einstein to know after his cousin John the Baptist was beheaded that they were not open to hearing the gospel that Jesus was preaching. Uh, you didn't have to, you didn't have to be, read the, uh, the cards or go to a, uh, a medium to know that. Jesus would say that his fidelity to the truth as God, his offer of salvation was more and more rubbing against the, the religious values as preached by the leaders, as he points out, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders, but also against the political Herod, King Herod, King of Galilee, Pontius Pilate, Roman governor of Judea. Uh, and in the end we know that he did indeed bear his cross, a real cross, and he was crucified. So of course, but what he said when, when Peter didn't want to hear where Jesus' fidelity was leading. And Jesus knew it was important that he understand that God would not be turned back. Um, that, in, that he, as the Son of God, would not be turned back from the truth, from the love, from the salvation that he offered. Even if that led to death and then to the resurrection. And he, when he's talking then about the disciples, in, in Mark there are three times he talks about this. This is the first, the next chapter, and the chapter after. So this is 8, 9, and 10, if you count the chapters in Mark. He talks about it again and again. It was clear that Jesus knew that this was going to be a crisis for any disciple of his, because he wants us to go deeper. Yes, we have to deal with the reverses of life. Yes, we're stuck with the sicknesses that we get and, and all of that. Yes, that's true. Yes, we all have to die. But, uh, but Jesus is talking about what the fidelity of the gospel, when he says deny yourself, he's saying, Turn, not turn aside from everything good in life, because Jesus loved the good things in life. He loved a good dinner, and he loved friends, and he loved to be with people. He loved all the good things that life could offer him, you know? But what he would not turn away from 
was the fidelity to the gospel that he was preaching and to the liberation of the poor. That's where, uh, you know, and he was constantly criticized. One of the most offensive things about Jesus was who he ate dinner with. You didn't eat with people who were impure. You didn't eat with sinners. You kept yourself away from those kind of people. You didn't go into Roman homes. You didn't cure pagans. You didn't do those kinds of things. And Jesus knew the message of His message of God was a message for all, in particular, the most vulnerable. So when you're denying yourself, it's not that you have to endure, it's that you have to, to go deeper. Well, I have to, you have to, we have to go deeper in our fidelity. And Christ will lead us that way. And it will be the fullness of life. I celebrated the funeral from a good friend who was uh, this week on, on Friday, Thursday and Friday. And she was, a, was an example of that for me. That is to say, a person who followed Christ with every leg. She was the only Catholic in her family. And she was a deep, profound Christian from the age of seven to the age she died at 61. And, uh, and she had raised her children and grandchildren as wonderful Christians. But you can imagine when she was led into the Catholic Church from a more evangelical church, it was something that her children, her father, her, no one understood. It was not the way it goes. And, but she understood, and she understood that that was part of the cross. She was going to follow where God led her. And God, she, was, she knew God had led her to the Eucharist, to the church. Even though she knew the church, as we all know, was a sinful place. Not you, not us. <laughs> <laughs> not you, not <laughs> She knew. She knew that. And it was it was a shock to her. You know, she told me one time that her, her children, who loved her and revered her, were so shocked, they said, don't talk religion to our children. And uh, they, they were shocked. And she understood it. But because it was following the gospel, following the gospel, and she knew that this is, it entails, and it wasn't crushing when our children said, don't talk religion to your grandchildren, you know, um, she understood. It was too much for them to deal with, it wasn't anything that offended her, because she understood, that's the liberation, you see, not just dealing with all of the issues that anyone has to deal with in life, but rather following Christ so faithfully that you can follow wherever He leads. And that is liberation. And that's what Jesus wants. And that's where Peter was a stumbling block. You know? He was only thinking about in a human way. But God's got a better plan for us, not simply a human way. But a God way, a God way. So I encourage you this week, not just on those things you have to offer up, as my mother would suggest, which we all have to do, right? But think about where God could lead you. And a good place to start is with the second reading. Wasn't that clear? Right? From James? Well, act on it. It's not, not enough to say, to someone, as James says, who's, who's cold and, and hungry, I hope you stay warm and well fed, you know, without doing it. He says, so let, let God move you and me this week, maybe today, but certainly this week, to act on our faith, to, to deny our humanity in that regard and turn toward our divinity.